scheduled meeting of the Rock Island City Council uh, for September 9th, 2024. This time I'd like to please ask everybody to stand and observe a moment of prayer.
This time I'd like to uh, ask, Gordon, please call the roll. Member 9? Here. Blackwell? Here. Joyner? Here. Teacher? Walker? Here. Daltrich? Here. Harris? Here. Jabari Walker? Yeah. Right, we have a quorum here, Vice President. Uh, this time I'd like to recognize uh, Mr. Robbie Davis, Chairman of Bench County uh, Board of Commissioners. Thank you for being here, Chambers. Um, so this time I'd like to, uh, item number four on the agenda is consideration of the minutes of the regular scheduled city council meeting, which was held on June 24, 2024. Uh, recommended action or request is to approve these minutes. Is there a motion? Uh, motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Jabar Schwarzer. Is there a deeper discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like aye. sign. Minutes are approved. This time, consideration for additions or deletions to the agenda. I do have one addition that's been requested, and that's a closed session for personnel uh, matters. Um, are there any other items that need to be added or deleted from the agenda or requested to be so? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to include closed session at the end of the meeting for the personnel matters. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Harris. Second. Second by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, like sign. This time I'll turn the meeting over to our city manager, Peter F. Barnum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Governor Cooper has ordered the flags at uh, facilities across the state of North Carolina to fly at half staff. Uh, through the end of the day tomorrow in honor of NC House of Representative Kelly Alexander Jr., who passed away on Friday. Prior to representing Mecklenburg County, he was a civil rights leader, president of the North Carolina NAACP, and served on the national NAACP board. The only reason I would bring that to your attention is that uh, he was also in my MPA class at UNC at Chapel Hill many years ago. Starting today through... Uh, Friday at 6 p.m. Halifax Road between uh, Bethlehem Road and uh, Sunset Avenue will, will be closed and, or has been closed in both directions with detours for maintenance. Motorists would need to use Bethlehem Road, Winston Avenue, Sunset Avenue to travel around this closure. I don't know the duration of the closure, but if you're in that, uh, plan to go through that area, be aware. The Rock Island Fire Department and Police Departments will hold a 9-11 uh, ceremony on Wednesday, September the 11th at 10 o'clock in uh, re remembrance of the nearly 3,000 people who lost their lives from the attack by Al-Qaeda on September 11, 2001. The ceremony will be held uh, in the City Hall courtyard by the Flat Bulls. In celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, the Police Department will host the Festival of Culture and Union Saturday, September the 14th from 1 to 6 at uh, Sunset Park. This free family event will feature musical guests, food, games, resources, and, and services vendors, and much more. Come on out and attend. The Down East Viking uh, Football Classic featuring the Elizabeth City State University Vikings and the Fayetteville State Broncos will take place on Saturday, September 21st at 2 p.m. in the Rocky Mountain Athletic uh, Stadium across the sports complex. For tickets on the reserve, a tailgating spot uh, called the number that should be on that screen there. On Friday, September 20th, at six, in connection with this, at 6.30 p.m., the Parks and Recreation Department and the Rocky Mountain Event Center will host Downtown Date Night, a night in New Orleans, featuring a musical performance by Nito and the Brassaholics, with a New Orleans-inspired buffet uh, prepared by the guest chef uh, Malik Williams. The event will be held in the Rocky Mountain Event Center. General admission tickets are $40. So you can go to the website for the event center to find more information about that. That's all I have. We got, does anybody have any questions or comments for our city manager and just four? Okay. At this time, we have a number of, I'm sorry, I did not see you. No, yes, no, no. I didn't have one until I jumped into it, I forgot. Um, this is party for activities related to, um, throughout the city, related to Downing Cycling Classic. Is that on our website, or is there, and I'm talking about not just sort of city-sponsored events, but is there any place that uh, there's a community calendar connected to um, the multiple events that take place all over the city? I have to say, I haven't looked at our website lately, so if I can, I don't know. Does somebody... Uh, Sports Complex should host that. They, they handle all those events. Um, 
90% sure it's there, and certainly we'll keep pushing it through Facebook. So people have something to inform people about, do they get in touch with Parks and Rec or you? Um, they can always call us and we'll direct them. So they can certainly reach out to communications. And we'll can you drop that? Uh, the communications department, um, um, two, four, uh, 972 uh, 1366. 972 1366. If you're a host and a sponsor, it's related to that. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, with that said, we have a number of presentations and recommendations tonight. So, what I'm going to do, each one of these is a resolution. So, I'm going to read the resolution, ask for a motion, and a second, and a vote on that resolution. Then I'll ask the team to come forward at that point in time and uh, we'll get a picture. Um, so, first one is resolution recognizing and congratulating the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 10 U All Star Boys Basketball Team for winning the 2024 NCRPA SWAC 10 U Basketball State Championship. And whereas the North Carolina Recreation and Parks Association NCRPA Statewide Athletics Committee SWAC. Uh, 2024 10U State Boys Basketball Tournament was hosted by Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation at the Rocky Mountain High School Gym on March 15th through the 17th <coughs> in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and brought teams in from across the state. And whereas all star team players are nominated by their coach and placed on a ballot to be selected, these players are intended to be the best representatives of the league, and not only in competition, but also in character. Whereas on March 17th of 2024, the Rocky Mountain Parks and Rec Department's 10 u All-Star Boys basketball team rallied to win the 2024 NCRPA SWAC State Basketball Tournament for their age bracket. And whereas this win provided the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 10 u All-Star All -Star Boys basketball team to be the best of the best in their age group, winning games over Henderson Vance and Onslow County at the state tournament. And whereas this championship win marks the second straight season, a Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation All Star basketball team has won the NCRPA SWAC Sponsor State Basketball Tournament. And whereas, while there were outstanding individual players in the tournament, winning the championship was a total team effort, following team effort from the following team members Robert Arnold Jr., Kingston Bill, Jamal Body Jr., Josiah Burgess, Kyrie. Bobs, Tristan Harvey, Caden Howard, Christian Jones, Jaden Moore, Josiah Reynolds, and Kyrie Saunders, and Malik Stevens. Whereas also contributing to team success were their coaches, Aquisha Parker and William Edmond, and the team parents who provided unwavering support. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor, mayor, and me, and the Rocky Mountain City Council hereby congratulate the Rocky Mountain Parks. And Red Department's 10 U All Star Boys basketball team of this great accomplishment and honor the winning of the 2024 10 U NC RPA SWAC Boys Basketball Championship. And be it further resolved that the Mayor and City Council individually and collectively thank the members of the team, the coaches, staff, and support personnel for their honor the championship has brought to the team and to the city of Rocky Mountain. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall be spread upon the pages of the minutes of this proceeding, and a copy shall be presented to each team member of the coaches who were instrumental in winning this phenomenal championship. I look for a motion. No move. Motion to have a council join. Second by Council Knight. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. It's now been a vote.
Thank you. Winning the 2024 NCRPA SWAG 12U Basketball State Championship. So, whereas the North Carolina um, Recreation and Park Association is the NCRPA and the Statewide Athletics <coughs> Committee SWAG, the 2024 12U State Girls Basketball Tournament was hosted by Pinehurst Parks and Recreation at the Cannon Park Community Center. On March 16th through the 17th in Pinehurst, North Carolina, and brought teams in from across the state. And whereas all star team players are nominated by their coaches and placed on a ballot to be selected by league coaches, these players are intended to be the best representatives of the league, not only in competition, but also in character. Whereas on March 17th of 2024, the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 12U also girls basketball team rallied to win the 2024 NCRPA SWAC State Basketball Tournament for their age bracket. Whereas this win proved to be the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 12U All-Star Basketball Team to be the best of the best in their age group, winning games over Duplin County, Wendell, and Carteret County at the state tournament. And whereas... This championship win marks the first NCRPA SWAC State Basketball Championship for the Rock Mountain Parks and Recreation All-Star Girls Basketball Team. And whereas while they were outstanding individual players in the tournament, winning the championship was a total team effort from the following team members. Benara Abuka, Rose Arnold, Amila Edgerton, Straya Ganapathy. Y'all are really going to make a part of me. <laughs> Aliyah Harvey, Kendall Harvey, Mariah Harvey, Evan Hendricks, Hannah Munoz Carnes, Chloe uh, Murphy, Rain Pitt, and Kylie Pittman. We are also contributed to this team's success for their coaches, Corey Hendricks, Monty Edgerton, Kendall Harvey, and the team parents who provided unwavering support. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor of the Rocky Mountain City Council Hereby congratulate the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 12U All-Star Girls Basketball Team on this great accomplishment in honor of winning the 2024 12U NCRPA Scrag Girls Basketball Championship and be it further resolved that the Mayor and City Council individually and collectively thank the members of the team, the coaches, staff, and support personnel for the honor of the championship has brought to the team and to the City of Rocky Mountain. And be a further result that this resolution shall be spread upon the pages of the minutes of this proceeding, and a copy shall be presented to each team member and the coaches who were instrumental in winning this phenomenal championship. I'm looking for a motion to adopt this resolution. Motion made by Councilman Joyner, second by Councilman Daltridge. Need for discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Now adopt. Thank you. 
I'm sick of the death of Rock Island Parks and Recreation Department. So busy in the month of March, and we're here celebrating. Have we got another resolution recognizing and congratulating the Rock Island Parks and Recreation Department's 12U All Star Boys Basketball Team for winning the 2024 NCRPA SWAC 12U Basketball State Championship. <clears throat> Whereas the North Carolina Recreation and Parks Association, NCRPA, and the Statewide Athletic Committee, SWAC 2024 12U State Boys Basketball Tournament was hosted by the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation at the Rocky Mountain High School Gym on March 15th through the 17th in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and brought teams in from across the state. Whereas the All-Star team players were nominated by the coach and placed on the ballot to be selected by league coaches, these players are intended to be the best representatives of the league, not only in competition, but also in character. And whereas on March 17th of 2024, the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 12U All-Star Boys Basketball Team rallied to win the 2024 NCRPA SWAT State Basketball Tournament for their age bracket. And whereas this win proved to be the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 12U All-Star Basketball Team, to be the best of the best in their age group. Winning games over Henderson Vance, Hamlet, and Southwest Duplin at the state tournament. Whereas this championship win marks the second straight season, a Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation All-Star Basketball Team has won an NC RPA SWAC sponsored state basketball tournament. And whereas while outstanding individual players were in the tournament, winning the championship was a total team effort for the following team members. Thomas Arrington, Caden Bryant, Noah Bryant, Kendall Hopkins, Zion Howard, Kaysen McGee, Cameron Perry, Bruce Josiah, Garrett Smith, Philippe Walker, Darius Williams Jr., and Josh Williams. And we're also contributing to team success for their coaches. John Smith, Justin Howard, Brian McGee, and team parents who provided unwavering support. Now, therefore, be resolved that the mayor and the Rocky Mountain City Council hereby congratulate the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 12U All-Star Boys Basketball Team of this great accomplishment and honor of winning the 2024 12U NCRPA SWAC Boys Basketball Championship. And be it further resolved that the mayor and city council individually and collectively thank the members of the team, the coaches, staff, and support personnel for the honor of the championship is brought to the team and to the city of Rocky Mountain. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall be spread upon the pages of the minutes of this proceeding, and a copy shall be presented to each team member and coaches who were instrumental in winning this phenomenal championship. I now look for a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Harris, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a deeper discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion this resolution has been adopted this ninth day of September. We got two shots, three to two, and smile for them. I want more. 
Ruth, to Anne. Thank you. And finally, finally, resolution res recognizing and congratulating the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 14U All Star Basketball Team for winning the 2024 NCRPA SWAG 14U Basketball State Championship. Now, whereas the North Carolina Recreation and Parks Association, the NCRPA, and Statewide Athletic Committee, the SWAC 2024 14U State Basketball Tournament was hosted by the Nash County Recreation and Senior Services at Nash Central Middle School on March 14th through the 17th in Nashville, North Carolina, and brought teams in from across the state. And whereas all star team players are nominated by the coach and placed on a ballot to be selected by the league coaches. These players are intended to be the rep best representatives of the league, not only in competition, but also in character. And whereas on March 17, 2024, the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 14U All-Star Basketball Team rallied to win the 2024 NCRPA SWAC State Basketball Tournament for their age bracket. And whereas this win proved the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 14U all-star basketball team to be the best of the best in their age group, winning games over Tarboro, Onslow County, Carteret, and Nash County at the state tournament. And whereas this championship win marks the second straight season, the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation All-Star Basketball Team has won an NCRPA SPAC sponsored state basketball championship. And whereas there, while, they out, while there were outstanding individual players in the tournament, winning the championship was a total team effort. From the following team members, Zakaya Allen, Octavius Anderson, Jameer Bullock, Rashid Farmer, Elijah Gamble, Pierre Hewlin, Quante James, Jermaine Lynch, Brylan Moses, Lucas Thomas, and Shania Wilson. And whereas the team contributing to the team's success were their coaches, Norman Hewlin, Jessica Crawford, Derek Coleman, and the team parents who provided unwavering support. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor of the Rocky Mountain City Council hereby congratulate the Rocky Mountain Parks and Recreation Department's 14U All-Star Basketball Team and this great accomplishment in honor of winning the 2024 14U NCRPA SWAC Basketball Championship. And be it further resolved that the mayor and city council individually and collectively thank the members of the team, the coaches, staff, and support personnel for the honor the championship has brought to the team and the city of Rocky Mountain. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall be spread upon the pages of the minutes of this proceeding, and a copy shall be presented to each team member and the coaches who were instrumental in winning this phenomenal championship. I look for a motion to adopt this resolution. Oh, All in favor say aye. aye. All right. Well, this motion has been adopted the ninth day of September 2020. Thank <laughs> you. 
That brings us to item number eight on our agenda, which are petitions to be received from the public. The public petitions portion of the City Council meeting is an opportunity for public comment, and the City Council appreciates your attendance and values all citizen input. This is an opportunity to express views and concern about the City of Rocky Mount to the Council. However, in most cases, Council members will not respond to public comments but may refer a matter to the City Manager or staff for follow-up. Time will be monitored or to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have three minutes. Please be aware that signing sheets must be presented to the security officer prior to the opening of the city council meeting. If an organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to present the group's comments. If your comments are in regard to an item that is subject to a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time may be granted. The city council requests that you please adhere to the following guidelines. Complete the sign-in sheet, address comments to the council as a whole and not to individual council members or the city staff, speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner. Personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated and do be asked to sit down or be removed from the meeting. Keep comments to three minutes. This time I'd like to invite Butch Dancy to the podium. <clears throat> Good evening, and also good night. Uh, been with you, the council, since 4 p.m., but it's been well worth it. The information in the committee of the whole meeting was overwhelming. It is a shame that Keith Rogers has put the city and council in this state of mess. It appeared during the committee of the whole meeting that one councilman was trying to throw Ken Hunter on the bus. I am so glad the majority of the council came to the conclusion that it was time for Keith Rogers to be gone. Because if he had stayed any longer, ain't no telling where the city would end up. Now it is time for this council to set aside egos and move the city forward. Thanking you in advance for what you are about to do. What happened to transparency? I'll wait. I'd like to invite Gloria Austin to the podium. Gloria yeah. L. Austin? Yeah, that's you. I'm not a public person like that. Good evening. Good evening. What's this so special about today? I'm glad to be here, but. Talk to me. What is it? Ms. Austin, I think that oh, we was that a yeah, I'm sorry. I think we received a request for you to, to address us tonight. Did you have an issue you wanted to discuss tonight? Do I have one? Yes, ma'am. Oh, it must be. Did it take place not here, somewhere? Sunday? No. Awesome. Did you sign up to speak tonight? Did I? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I, somebody did. But I, somebody, I, I thank you for your time. It, it, it must have been an error. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was mean, born here in Rocky Mountain, not a little place. Well, Sometimes some little things come Let's get that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Koo to the podium. Good evening. The sudden disappearance of our recently hired city manager has raised a lot of questions and speculations. Citizens were told that Mr. Rogers had taken a leave of absence. What does that even really mean? Was he fired? 
he resigned or what? He was a, he was the shortest term city manager I had ever known. Shorter than uh, his trust. He was here, now he's gone. Poof! And no explanation was given to the good citizens of Rocky Mount who paid his salary with our tax dollars. Why is everything so hush-hush? Don't we as tax-paying citizens deserve to know? Council members are always talking about transparency. Where is this transparency now? The high turnover of our city managers is very destabilizing for our city. Business is difficult to conduct. Development is delayed. Projects get shelved. Disputes left hanging and unresolved. As each new manager has to familiarize himself or herself with the city. Can you imagine a new city manager having the attitude that this was before my time, or I'm not directly involved, eventually washing the hands of every unfinished business. In the final analysis, there is something very wrong with the way a potential city manager is better in this city. It should not be made by a simple majority. The review should be rigorous, community representatives should be part of the process, and approval should be unanimous. I'm here. One voice among many who really want a clear and official explanation from council as to what happened to Mr. Keith Rogers and why he's no longer holding the position of the city manager. We deserve this much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. I'd like to invite uh, Richard Petway to the podium. Good evening, my name is Richard Petway, and to the city, to the I can say the manager, to the city council, and to the people. We are at all over the raises that have been given out to poor people. A million dollars that was in the budget. But yet it's still the city workers regain no money. We are at all at the fight that the city manager who said that he wanted to turn, they said they want to turn pound, but yet it's still they fired Arnie Jones for doing nothing. Practically nothing, but yet and still there's another uh, man that hit two par call, and nothing had been said, nothing had been put in the paper, nothing had been uh, revealed about this case. But yet and still, Arne Jones got fired. We are there all because this is it is our responsibility as a citizen to find out what's going on. Now there are five people getting this kind of money. But the city, city workers who are only making forty thousand to fifty thousand can't even make sixty thousand, sixty thousand a year. But you got those people that are making over one hundred and fifty thousand, along with the city manager who's making two hundred thousand. Where's the money going? We another matter that comes to mind is that we have no uh, uh, transparency over the who. Um, I know, for instance, city workers have told me that they have been scrutinized because they spoke out at the city council meeting about wages. It is, it is foregone that the city manager will let this happen. You got the HR department and the R department, human relations department. Yet and still, nobody investigate what's going on. It's time for someone to act. And I think it's time is now. We have streets that got trees on the sidewalk. Limb, you can't even see over the, over the street because the limb is out past the street. And cars coming up that you can't see. You got to ease out there in the road. Yet it's still there is not being cut. We got houses that burned down, burn up. It is a hazard to the city and people that go in them. They haven't been addressed. But yet and still, you can fire on the Jones and the city manager ain't even doing his job. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Muntaz Shaikh to the uh, podium. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Council members, yes. ladies and gentlemen. My gut feeling has always been that the ex city manager was hired to focus on a, sp a specific agenda. He was carefully selected and supported by his allies on the council for a purpose. 
The terrain was perfect as he operated in a milieu of consensus and dissenters, the latter consistently silenced and ignored when pertinent budget questions were raised, a formula guaranteed to produce the desired results. Knowing that financial irregularities aroused deep public ire and condemnation, he was given the budget as his weapon to wield as he pleased. He busted it with overinflated salaries for favored groups. He and four of his assistant city managers alone cost the city close to a million dollars. Your tax, your taxes. Other bloated salaries are online for you to view. Alongside this astronomical salaries, unheard of in City Hall Rocky Mount ever, he gave the sanitation workers <coughs> peanuts, creating division and deep dissatisfaction in the city. He and he also he nurtured a culture of fear and retaliation to muzzle voices demanding fair wages. Additionally, he abused his power and broke every tenet of transparency by refusing to release documents requested by his colleagues for as long as he was imperial lord of the council. He demonstrated lack of participation and rapport with public during council meetings. He was more engaged with his phone. The above observe, observed Aberrant behavior could not have been the sole grounds for his sudden dismissal. I question if more is under the rug. His dismissal, not unexpected, unnerved the city's spawning unfair, menacing, and divisive speculation, which could have been quickly quelled by a statement from the city. In the meantime, a slew of allegations appeared on social media outlining his widespread financial shenanigans with support from his cabal. The public is demanding an explanation for his termination. Why has the mayor, whose motto is one Rocky Mount, not spoken to this serious matter to this day? Is it, it is time to come forward and address the concerns of citizens to whom he is accountable and snuff out tension in the city once and for all. This is the time to be transparent and assure the public that you and the City Council are still relevant and have the qualities and abilities to pick a decent candidate as our next city manager, a leader deeply anchored in, this, in the community with a forward focus, not an agent of chaos, here today and gone tomorrow. It is time to earnestly focus on solutions for issues confronting a city in crisis. Speak. The Thank public you. is ready to Thank listen. You. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Chairman, Robin Davis, to the podium. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, clerk and attorney, and of course, Mr. Barney. Glad to see you back in the saddle there, sir. I come here tonight, if I may, Mayor, uh, as an employee of Turnkey Contractor, Robin Davis. Uh, what I'd like to speak to you about is our development services department located on the first floor of, of City Hall. What we call in the construction world a one-stop place to do all your business. I want to thank the board and the staff for putting that together. It has been a while since our company worked in the city limits of Rocky Mount. Uh, no particular reason. It's probably been three years. We find ourselves this year doing four major projects inside the city limits, and it's been our first experience with dealing with the development services department that had been formed downstairs. <laughs> We're currently doing a major addition out of the Carolina Eagle uh, Budweiser distributorship, steel technology, who is a steel fabricator out in the uh, north side business park, Stockton Glove and Safety, which is located on Dozier Road, a 30,000 uh, square foot addition. And of course, some of you know about the title data system LLC that we have built out at Merchants Park. But in dealing with those projects, uh, I who deals mostly with commercial construction was simply amazed at how much things have improved. Uh, you've got a system down there now that works. You've got people working down there that are very pleasant to deal with. It hasn't always been that way. And I do know y'all have heard complaints from time to time. But Justin Floyd and Alan Peacock, uh, who is who we deal with mostly, are just a great asset to the city of Rocky Mount. Justin's been here a long time, of course, but kind of in a different role. And I can't help but see how pleasant the three ladies that sit up front are. Uh, they're just a joy to go see. 
and all the inspectors are very uh, knowledgeable. They are very courteous, and they do what I wish all inspectors would do, which is to help a contractor get from point A to point whatever point he's going to, and not be there to try to stop him from getting there. And I find that to be going on there. But I'll be very brief and just say thank you. It's a job that has been greatly done, and uh, I won't speak for any other contractors, but I hear quite a few compliments from time to time, and certainly on behalf of my employee, turnkey contractors, we thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Davis, and that's high price. We will accept those any day of the week. I'd like to invite uh, Teresa Austin Stokes to the party. Good evening, everyone. That will be brief. Um, I just wanted to take time to express my gratitude to our interim city manager, Peter Varney, for your prompt and transparent response to a recent concern. Um, your swift action and transparency are greatly appreciated. And may you and our city council work together to advance the progress of our city. Also, would like to thank the city for um, hosting the end of summer celebration that took place at Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Park. Um, it was a great way to end the summer, and now we're looking forward to the Down East Viking Football Classic. We hope that you continue to put these programs, um, keep these programs in our community. They're very valuable and much needed. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'd like to invite uh, Bronson Williams to the podium. I say good evening to you. Say so the bandwagon effect is a psychological phenomenon in which people do something primarily because other people are doing it, regardless of whether, regardless of whether their own beliefs, which are doors, oftentimes overridden, and oftentimes referred to as a hardened mentality. So, the question I have for the city council today, in fact, I emailed uh, some months, some weeks ago, after receiving an email about the leave of. City Manager Keith Rogers. The North Carolina General Statute 168-149, Acting City Manager, the General Statute 148-150, uh, dealing with the Interim City Manager, gives, of course, the authority to the City Council to do such, such actions. However, General Statute 143 talks about open laws, open meetings, access to public participation, because that's important. It's very much important. You have hired for years, Potter and Squirrel, who is the, the law firm for this office, and I would hope they're advising the council as such and giving correct information that the city council is heated to it, because in the committee of the whole this evening, or this afternoon rather, I heard many conversations about employees following policies and following this and following that, and so I asked, is this council doing the same thing? Are you following the very general statutes that you're obligated to do? Are you really taking heart to the oath of office in which you took when you stood right here some years ago for some and, and most of years ago for others? This is a real question. Actions of the city council cannot be taken in closed session. In fact, actions of the city council must be taken in open session. So today, I have a question as to how is Mr. Varney sitting here as interim city manager? That was an action to appoint a city manager, an interim city manager. In that capacity, must be done in open session. Now, if Mr. Rogers is taking on leave, I saw the closed session statutes of 143 talks about how actions such as that administrative leave can be done in closed session. You can do consensus votes and see how y'all feeling and uh, look at the measure, the temperature of the room. But the reality is, I go back to months ago when there was or wasn't whatever a committee that was dealing with budgets and meeting behind doors, talking about this and talking about that, looking at some blatant, perhaps misuse of time and, and whatever else. Just, just blatantly I'm following all of it. You know what I mean? So I always heard this thing that says you must practice what you preach. So if we're preaching that employees and their thereof must follow policies, we have to have that same guild and, and uh, from the city council, from every single one of you and, and the mayor for that matter. So I hope that I'll get some further education that I'm not correct in my thinking, and so I can be educated, because I did afford the opportunity to go to law school, but but I, I thank the city for hiring one so he or she can educate the community so we can be better citizens, be more involved in things as we move here and move there. I'll talk more on TV tomorrow. Thank you very much. With that, uh, that brings us to item number nine, which is the consent agenda. For 
tonight. And I'll look for a motion to approve the tax releases, the dot ordinance, and resolutions. To acknowledge receipt of petition and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the bid contract on behalf of the city. Authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute leases and authorize the interim city manager and city clerk to execute all closing documents for acquisitions. Is there a motion? No, no, no. Motion by Councilman Knight, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing not all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Consent agenda passes. Item number 10 is consideration of the recommendations of a planning board meeting, which was held July 9th of 2024, um, and acknowledge receipt of the planning board minutes. Uh, this is to see. Um, at this time, I would like to ask a member of staff to please come forward. We'll have, I will then open up the floor for members of the public who wish to speak on this particular issue. I would ask a council if they would be willing to adopt the ordinance. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Ms. Nixon. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. The rezoning request before you today is a uh, property on North Wesleyan Boulevard. It is about halfway between Thomas A. Betts Parkway and Business Park Drive. The parcel has approximately 622 feet of frontage on North Wesleyan and is currently zoned R10, which is a single family residential zoning district. And the proposal is to rezone this piece to B5 with conditions. B5 is intended to support a variety of commercial uses. The subject property is currently surrounded by a variety of industrial and commercial uses and zoning districts. Um, to the north is a single family residential dwelling. To the west is a landscaping service and indoor sports range. And those properties are zoned B5, also B5CD. Uh, to the east, across North Wesleyan, uh, there's a variety of uses, um, including a single-family dwelling and a barber and beauty shop in the <coughs> OI zoning district. And I, I did misspeak. The property to the north is undeveloped. It does not have a single-family residence. It's undeveloped. Um, the Together Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan recommends um, this area, the infill and developed area, and um, the surrounding uh, properties are consistent with uh, with what the com uh, what the comprehensive plan would recommend in terms of zoning for a uh, commercial corridor with um, a high transportation volume. Um, I mentioned that the proposal is to rezone to B five C D, and the applicant is including um, a condition that would prohibit a series of land uses on the subject property in the screen. In front of you shows the complete list of land uses that would be prohibited on the property. Um, those uses include kennel operations, a beauty shop, barber service, blacksmith services, flea markets, um, some dwellings, recycling centers, and so on. If you have any questions, please do let me know. It is a long list of prohibited uses. The planning board recommended approval of the proposed rezoning based on compatibility of the proposed zoning with surrounding land uses and zoning, um, and also the appropriateness of the B5 zoning district along the major transportation corridor. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Any questions from Spinkson? From Council? Um, Ms. Spinkson, any, any feedback from neighbors related to um, the rezoning request? Yes, in fact, the neighbor to the west, the immediate west, um, proposed the, the conditions and those were agreed upon by the applicant. And these are rezoning conditions that are also applied to the property to the west. So out of consistency um, with that zoning condition, the neighbor to the west felt that these conditions would also be appropriate on this property and the property owner uh, was agreeable to that. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, with that said, uh, we will open up the podium to anyone who cares to speak on this particular matter. It's a request by Barbara Haddock Knuckles to rezone property having an area plus or minus 5.28 acres at 2915 North Wesleyan Boulevard from R10, which is low density residential district, to B5CD, which is Conditional Commercial Services District. Those conditions have just been indicated by uh, Ms. Pinkston. Is there anyone here from the public who wishes to speak to this rezoning matter? Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Douglas. Good evening again. Um, I am the property owner to the west of this property, and as was stated by staff, we worked very well with the developer or the proposed owner of the property and worked out the list. It's very similar to what we have in Northside Business Park, so we're very pleased with both the rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member of the public who wishes to speak on this particular matter? Okay, seeing none, I'll uh, look for a motion to adopt the ordinance as proposed. So moved. Motion made by Councilor Harris, second by Councilor Joyner. Is there a need for further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. That brings us to a public hearing relative to the following land development code amendments recommended for approval, found compliance with the conference plan by the planning board. This request by Adrian Copeland of Aloha Group LLC to rezone property having an area of plus or minus 0.24 acres um, at 1131 South Church Street from R6 MFA, which is a medium density multifamily residential district, to B5 CD, which is a conditional. Conditional, conditional commercial services district. Uh, the following uses shall be prohibited. That's the use of the kennel, crematorium, nightclub, bar, or tavern. The hours of operation of a non residential use be limited from 7A to 10P. Uh, at this point, uh, Ms. Mixon, do you care to speak to this particular matter? Sure, I'll speak briefly. Um, as you described, this is a proposed rezoning from R6 MFA to B5 CD with the conditions outlined on the screen. Um, the property is currently occupied by a warehouse and a commercial structure. It is surrounded um, entirely by single family residential in the R6 MFA district, but again, it does have a commercial structure on the property and has been used as commercial um, in the past. Uh, the B5 zoning district is intended for a variety of commercial uses, and the Together Tomorrow comprehensive plan identifies this area as infill growth. Um, while the property is surrounded entirely by single-family residential, um, it does have a commercial structure, as I described, and preserving housing stock and affordable housing is an important um, recommendation from the Together Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan. And so the conditions have been placed on the rezoning in order to alleviate any concerns about um, potential commercial uses that might be located at the property. So that's the intent of uh, the conditions on the property. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Yes, Thank sir. You. Councilor Jordan? Yes. Have there been any community um, concerns or have the community been met with to notify them of the change? There was a notice mailed to adjoining property owners. There was no one from the public or no one from the public spoke um, in favor or opposition of this request other than the applicant herself at the planning board meeting. Anyone else? Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak to uh, this particular matter? It's a request by Adrian Copeland of Ola Aloha Group LLC to rezone property having an area of 0.24 acres at 1131 South Church Street from R6 MFA to B5CD. Is there any member of the public? Yes, ma'am. Hey, my name is Adrian Copeland. I'm the applicant. To address your question, uh, when I submitted the original application, um, this property lies pretty much right on the line between Little Raleigh neighborhood and South Rocky Mountain. So I did personally call the neighborhood representatives and spoke with Ella Clark of Little Raleigh and Brenda Cooper of South Rocky Mountain. And their feedback, their response was both positive. They wanted to see uh, more businesses go into this into this neighborhood. Um, so I see this request as not so much a reason into something new, but as to re request an oversight in zoning that occurred, it seems like when the building was, was constructed in 1944, it is a commercial building. It is even described as a commercial building, specifically a storage warehouse in the city's own records, but using the building as a storage warehouse is not allowed. So the rezoning should have happened when it was built, but it didn't. Looking a little deeper, the building has been continually used for commercial purposes in a residential zone for the past 80 years. So as far as concerns we're looking at, like effects on roadway capacity, there will be none. It already has a driveway and plenty of room to turn around. Everything will be the same. It would just make the uses of the past 80 years legal now. 
He uses where art, craft, glass, a glass factory. It was Pierce's body shop that did auto repair and body work and operate as a record service. It was the Sawdust Barn, which is a wood shop and contractor store and warehouse, and Drake's awning and window service, and they made and repaired windows and awnings. Every business that's ever occupied this building has been a B5 use and conforms to surrounding commercial uses up and down South Church Street that are already zoned B5. The only reason that I was allowed a certificate of occupancy was there was no change of use because I repair and rebuild windows, which made me the uniform buyer of that property because nobody does that work on windows anymore. They just throw them out. Um, so my business may be the end of the line for this building. With the commercial form and function of the building, it could never be used as a dwelling, a home, or a shelter. With R6 MFA zoning, the only new businesses that could come to this location to enrich and revitalize the neighborhood is a fortune teller or a health club. And that's not a good outlook for the neighborhood. This parcel zoning dooms the building to inevitable demolition because nobody can legally use it, and it dooms the block to get another vacant lot sometime in the future. Now, when we take a step back, we see the trend of the... Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Okay. I, I think the point's well taken. Well, okay. All right. I see everybody Thank bobbing you. their heads, so okay. I think we're good. But, uh, but if, if you have any questions, I'm going to go off. Any other member of the public who wishes to speak on this particular rezoning matter? Having done, I will receive a motion to adopt the ordinance as uh, proposed. So moved. Second. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. I was a second over here from Councilman Harris. Anything for comment? Any comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, like sign. Ordinance has been uh, passed. Brings us to item number 11, which is consideration of resolution authorizing a lease agreement with AC Dahar doing business as Yaba Group, Inc. For city owned property at 207 East Thomas Street, five year lease with an automatic renewal for one successive term of five years, annual rent of 42000 The renewed lease will increase rent by percent to $44,100 annually with the initial term beginning August 26, 2024. The renewal term will be August 26, 2029. 34. Lease is advertised pursuant to General Statute 160A 272. The requested action is that we postpone this until September 23 of 2024, the next city council meeting. Uh, is there a motion to do that? Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Blackwell. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion has been moved this to uh, the next meeting on September 23rd. Item 12 on the agenda is consideration of contract continuation with enhancements and innovations with Axon Fuchsias. So the total amount of correct uh, of contract extension is $5,135,523.86 over five years. The enhancements include additional licenses for sworn and non-sworn officers, tasers, drones, and interview rooms to increase the public safety suite of capabilities for carrying out law enforcement. This matter was postponed in the August 26th uh, meeting. This time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the contract and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion made by Councilman T.J. Walker. Second. Second by Councilman uh, Herb Joyner and Doctors. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, all opposed, like sign. Contract extension is, is made. Uh, item 13 is consideration of resolution authorizing the filing of an application for approval of an amendment to installing finance contract dated as of February 20, 2024, by between the City of Rocky Mountain and PNC Bank, Project Winner, and making the certain findings required by the North Carolina General Statute 159-151 to uh, also authorizing to execute First Amendment to Deed of Trust, consideration of the First Amendment to installing finance and contract with PNC Bank, the final maturity date of the 2024 IOC will be modified from 1 2029 to 2 2034. The principal payments will be rised accordingly. All other terms remain unchanged. This time I'll receive a motion to adopt the resolution to authorize the appropriate staff to execute the amended deed of trust and to approve the amended amendment to its installment financing contract and authorize the mayor, interim city manager, finance director, and city clerk to execute the same. Second. Second by Councilman Joyner, second by Councilman Harris. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, okay. sorry, Councilman Blackwell. Yes, second, we just explain what it's for. I'll, I'll defer to uh, Peter, but I believe this is really the uh, term mode that we borrowed for 
59 months to extend it out. And it really, really becomes a balance sheet transaction more than anything. So, all right. Any other questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. So item 14 is consideration of loan subordination agreement with North Carolina Housing Finance Agency relative to City of Rocky Mountain Partnership with Southeastern North Carolina Community Development Corporation on the Van Street Homes in the amount of $391,000. I look for a motion to authorize the mayor, city clerk, to execute the loan subordination agreement. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Second, Second by Councilman T.J. Walker. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Uh, that brings us to item 15, to consideration of memorandum of understanding between the Rock Mountain Police Department and Nash County Public Schools. The MOU includes eight SRO officers fully funded by Nash County Public Schools for the 2024, 2025, and 2025, and 2026 school years. I look for a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding. Hello. Oh gosh, I think that was all my shenanigans. Uh, motion made by Council TJ Walker, I think it was a second by Council Joyner. Is there anybody else I missed? Yeah. Council Mr. Barnes Walker. All right, any need for discussion? Yeah. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, like sign. Uh, with that said, that brings us to a closed session for personnel matter. This time I'd like the motion to go into closed session. Uh-huh. Motion made by Council Joyner, seconded by, by Council Knight. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, um, all in favor, please say aye. We are now in closed session. We will stay here um, for this particular closed session. Uh, then we're going to come out. We do have a continuation of the committee hall meeting, but just so everybody here. And, um, and then we will uh, open up and adjourn.